The Chinese government has you completely fooled. Do you think China has the virus under control? Are you looking to China for guidance on how to deal with this pandemic? Are you comforted by stories of China giving medical supplies and donations to your country or others? Let's remove that wool from your eyes and take a close, intelligent look at this situation. While China has successfully convinced you that it's leading the fight against the pandemic, which of course spread due to the Chinese government's cover-ups and incompetence, they have simultaneously convinced the people of China to blame this pandemic on the outside world, which has led to some ridiculously racist and xenophobic incidents against foreigners in China. State-sponsored and state-mandated discrimination against foreigners, regardless of whether or not they have a clean bill of health, are abundant. Let me share with you some stories that have been shared with me personally over the last week from friends around the country. Let's start in Beijing. A close acquaintance of my friend who has a Chinese wife and of course they have a mixed child. During the whole lockdown, as you know, kids are stuck in the home and they've got nothing else to do. So the child was running up and down, tripped over, fell down and actually really injured themselves, split open their lip, cracked a tooth, all that kind of thing. Now in Beijing, there is a specialist hospital for any kind of oral surgeries. And so he rushed with his wife down to that hospital, carrying the child, and they would not let him in because he was a foreigner. They would let his half Chinese child and his Chinese wife into the hospital. But because he's a foreigner, you're not allowed to step inside the hospital. A hospital? What if he was sick? What if he needed treatment? Anyway, he had to stand outside for hours while they operated and fixed uh, the problem with his son. Now, it makes absolute no sense because it's his wife and child who he's in constant contact with. So if you were to look at it from a common sense point of view, uh, it makes no sense at all. But the laws stipulated by the local authorities and that hospital says no foreigners allowed. Let's move on from Beijing to Shanghai. A friend of mine this week on the Shanghai subway was confronted by a woman who walked up to him and in English called him an American virus. That's not a very nice thing to do. This is one of many of these similar incidents I've heard. If you can understand Chinese as well, the people I know living in China right now that can understand Chinese are constantly hearing, overhearing people in public call them a virus or an American virus or a foreign virus, things like that. It's very, very unpleasant. Let's move away from that. I have another friend who got onto a domestic flight. But before the flight could take off, the other passengers on the same plane complained to the air hostess saying there is a foreigner on the flight and they were all very uncomfortable. The air hostess had to come to him, get all of his paperwork because, listen, you're not getting on a plane in China unless you have your special uh, health certificate that says that you are not infected with the Wuhan flu or COVID-19. So after presenting this to the air hostess, she had to actually go and show every single other passenger on the plane his paperwork with all of his personal details because it's got your address, your name, your telephone number, everything's on there. And she went to go show every single passenger to kind of um, allay their fears of this foreigner. And then after that was done, they still sat him all the way back at the rear of the plane and moved all the other passengers to the front of the plane. Just imagine that that had happened to a Chinese person or, or anyone else for that matter. It doesn't matter what your race is, but you were singled out because of your race, put to the back of the plane and everyone else put to the front. It's absolutely humiliating. But these are the kind of things that are happening in China all the time right now. My friend down in Zhuhai, who, by the way, has a degree in Chinese, can speak Chinese fluently. He has stuck to the rules. He stayed in his apartment. He's been working from home, just as instructed. Got a knock on his door from the police once again, who now wanted to come in and tell him that he's going to have a COVID-19 test the next day. Kind of strange, since he has been given a clean bill of health already and all that, but either way, they came back the next day, seven people strong, hazmat suits, put plastic down at the front of his door so that when they stepped into his apartment, they were standing on plastic, did the test, all the while his Chinese neighbors peeking out their doors, trying to see what's going on and watching him. He then asked them if everybody else in the building was getting tested, and they said, no, only you 
because you're a foreigner. And according to him, he's pretty convinced it was his Chinese neighbors that called the cops on him. Right now, in the southern city of Guangzhou, my African friends are being forcefully evicted from their apartments. These are apartments they've paid the rent for. Forcefully evicted from hotels, being rounded up. See what the Chinese police are doing to us. See. No house, no way to rest. They pursue us from our house. Look at them, look at them. They are chasing us away. Put into forced quarantine or being told they have 24 hours to 48 hours to leave China. This is absolutely ridiculous. A friend of mine who has a Chinese wife was forced out of his own apartment while his Chinese wife is allowed to stay in the apartment and he's told he has to leave China. This level of Nazi Germany kind of discrimination, xenophobia and racism is only being fueled by online posts calling foreigners rubbish, foreigners disease carriers, racist cartoons, pathetic nationalist propaganda. It's all boiling down to these very, very bad actions by both the Chinese government and Chinese society towards anyone who is not Chinese. Anyway, you know, there are so many anecdotes and stories that I'm hearing from people on the ground in China that I could keep going on for forever about these incidents of racism and xenophobia and discrimination. But let's move on. Let's talk about the whole medical donations to the West from China. During the very early days, when the Chinese government was trying incredibly hard to suppress any information or leaks about the fact that there was this new virus out there, you know, when it failed, they realized they had a crisis on their hands. So they went into overdrive. They locked down Wuhan, did not allow any travel in or out, enforced incredibly strict quarantine rules. And on January the 23rd, they prevented any travel in or out of Wuhan, but they allowed international flights to go out. So you see, they don't care. They didn't care that the virus was being spread to your country. They only cared that the virus would not be spread within the borders of China. During the same time, China banned the export of masks and vital medical supplies. Makes sense. They're in the middle of a crisis, but bear in mind, that means that foreign companies like 3M or whoever has a factory in China that produces masks, were not allowed to export the masks that they were producing within the borders of China. So all of that stock was hoarded to be used for the Chinese people and of course by the Chinese government. Now, at the very, very same time, the Chinese government instructed all state-linked companies abroad to buy up all of the vital medical supplies. Look at Australia, those massive real estate companies and that ex-PLA officer who bought up tons and tons, hundreds of tons of medical equipment to ship back. Turkey, Europe, Canada, the, the rest of the world had all of its very vital medical supplies liberated, we should say or stripped from the shelves and storehouses and sent back to China at the same time that China was not allowing any exports of the same products. During the months of January through March, over 2 billion masks and countless other medical supplies were successfully liberated from our countries and hoarded by Chinese state-linked companies, not to mention the army of Daigo living abroad, leaving nothing for you, your community and your family all the while throwing up a smoke screen by playing down the severity of the crisis and making their running dogs in the WHO criticize any country who proposed travel bans or who were overly concerned. The WHO said as recently as March 2nd that the stigma surrounding the virus was more deadly than the virus itself. Are you kidding me? Over 90,000 deaths worldwide is less deadly or dangerous than calling it the Chinese virus or the Wuhan flu? Seriously, I know that there have been some 
awful racist verbal attacks and there have been a couple of physical ones. No one's been killed. Not that I've read in the news because every single time there is any kind of a racist attack, it's immediately condemned by society and the mainstream media. You will not hear the end of it. And that's correct because we should not tolerate this kind of behavior. But 90,000 plus actual deaths? Now that's something to worry about. China knows how to play the West. They know how to trigger Western mainstream media to serve them. And that is why you'll see the Chinese state media constantly bring up the racist and xenophobic attacks against Chinese overseas or Asians overseas, while at the same time using that to divert attention away from the very real racist and xenophobic policies that they are putting towards foreigners of all races, colors and creed creeds within the borders of China. They constantly quote the WHO whenever anyone questions their mishandling of the pandemic and the virus. You see, they have infiltrated not only big organizations like the WHO and influenced them to do their bidding, but they know how to play the mainstream media. And this is their end goal. So now when China sells back the masks that it, for all intents and purposes, looted and pillaged from the rest of the world during a time of crisis, we're supposed to praise them? What about Italy, who donated tons of masks and now has to suddenly buy masks back from China? What about the faulty, low quality medical equipment that China is donating? We have to look through all of this stuff, guys, and we have to see it for what it is. For this is only the tip of the iceberg. China does not have this thing under control. And I have people on the ground all over China telling me that what they're seeing and what the media is saying are two completely different things. There will be a lot more on this in future videos on both my channel and the other channels that I'm involved in. However, let's sum this all up. For those of you who aren't in the know, this is what the Chinese government is good at. It's called face. The appearance of something is more important than its substance. And the way that they achieve this is through spending immense amounts of money and state resources on soft power. For China and the Chinese government, the impression that the rest of the world has of China is of the utmost importance. And if you have ever for a minute looked at China in a positive light, when it comes to the devastation they have unleashed on the world, it means that their manipulative ways have worked on you.